Hi traders. Now we are going to go into is the retracement entry strategy. This is the third and definitely most unique entry strategy of all three as it is waiting for the market to pull back to previous levels of support and resistance before you enter. When you enter, you place a stop level very close to your entry to keep your risk to a minimum. Even though this strategy may seem different, it still uses the basic principle of the task boxes and Vega for their indications of the support and resistance outlined by the high value area and low value area lines. Retracement strategies are low risk because with the market moving back against the overall trend, it means that your stop levels can be tighter on areas of resistance and support. Since the market has pulled back, it has reduced the area of volatility that you have to deal with in the market, allowing you to keep tighter stop levels. We will go into stop levels in the next section of this course. For now, we will be focusing on identifying retracement trade entry opportunities. Here's the difference in risk for a breakout method versus a retracement. For this box, with the breakout method, we would have entered the trade as soon as the market closed above the red high value area line. Our stop would have gone below the green low value area line. Whereas the retracement trade, our entry would have been when the market reached the bottom 20% of the box. And our initial stop would have also been placed just outside of the green low value area line. The difference in initial risk for the breakout method versus the retracement method is massive. This is what makes a retracement entry a valid option for task traders. Retracement entries are not without their faults as well. They are waiting for a very specific moment in the market where there is pullback on an already existing trade direction. This means that you will not always be able to find trade entries with this retracement method. This is not a problem as we discussed before how overentering trades is one of the biggest issues for new traders. The need to feel busy overcomes well-planned trades. In the end, the trader loses money on extra commissions and poorly executed low probability trades. You can also fix this problem with retracement entries by adding it as a separate strategy to trade with. Be on the constant lookout for this setup when you are trading on a day-to-day -day basis. So when the opportunity presents itself, you will be able to take advantage of the trade opportunity. The first rule of retracement strategies is that you always enter the trade in the current direction that Vega is indicating. You will always be looking at the last time Vega indicated red or green, and you will be taking your entries in that same direction. This is so that the retracement strategy is not confused with any trend reversal strategies. We are simply looking for entries in the same direction that the market is moving to increase our win probability. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. When a market is trending in one direction, it tends to stay in that direction until some event, a specific level, or other factor occurs. We are looking for moments in time when the market stalls in a specific area, pulls back to a previous level, and eventually continues in the initial direction. That might sound complicated, but once you see it on charts, it becomes overly simple. We first start by determining the direction of the trade. On this chart, you can see we are getting green Vega signals because the market is closing above the high value area line of the boxes. Once the direction is determined, we can look for a retracement. As the market stalled and started to retrace to previous levels, we saw an opportunity for a retracement entry. You might be asking at what level we would consider entering a retracement. I go by the general rule of 20% of the height of the box. Consider the height of the box to be 100%. When the market reaches the bottom 20% of the box, 
we will consider entering into a long trade. This can be varied depending on your own personal trading plan. It is, in theory, using the resistance and support level shown by the bottom of the box for the market for an area that will most likely provide support for the market. So when the market enters into this bottom 20%, you have the opportunity to enter into a long trade to capture even more of a trade's movement than either breakout strategy. You can see in this chart you have a second retracement. Even though the market does come to within 20% of the bottom of this box, we would not take this trade. This is because we do not want to keep entering positions as the market progresses. As a general rule, only enter a retracement trade within the first three boxes that form after a breakout move. So, once the initial breakout happened, we would only consider looking within the first three boxes. Now, while this is my strategy, you can adjust this to your own personal trading style. This means that you could adjust it higher or lower. Later on in this course, we will be showing you a special strategy for increasing the probability of this type of trade with different box formations. Keep in mind with all of these strategies, we will be going in depth on what stop loss levels you should be considering with every trade. Having an appropriate stop loss just below the green low value area here is one of the keys to making the retracement strategy a low risk, high opportunity trade. For this chart, we determine our directional bias as long and we look at the first three boxes for possible retracement entries. You can see we have our first possible retracement entry when the market comes down and bounces off of the support. Our second opportunity is on the third box when the market comes to within 20% of the bottom of this box offering us another chance for retracement entry. And even though on this fourth box, we would have possibly gotten an opportunity for a retracement, we would ignore it as we would be waiting for a market reversal before we would consider more retracement trades. Much like here when we got our short directional bias, the market retraced to previous levels and bounced off of the resistance this would be our chance for retracement. Now the key to all of these trades is where you place your stop level to make this low risk. Like I said, we're going to be going into this in more detail in the next section, but as a quick overview, you always want to place your stop for a retracement trade just outside of the opposite value area. So for this long trade, it would be just outside of the green low value area. For this long trade, again, it would be just outside of the green low value area. So if we did get stopped out, it would be a very minor loss. And for this short trade, again, it would be just outside of the red high value area. Again, a very minor loss for a potential large profit. Here, we got our short directional bias, and we had our first retracement opportunity on this second box. And we even got a second retracement opportunity here, when the market again bounced off of the red high value area and came to within 20% of the top of this box another fantastic short opportunity to add on to this trade. We will be talking about multi-lot trade entries, scaling in and scaling out in a later section. And even though we got another possible retracement here, this is the fourth box 
that we've come across since our original short bias. So we would not have looked for any retracement trades at this time. We would be waiting for a market reversal before we would start considering possibly long retracement entries. Here again we got our short directional bias and the market came back and bounced off of the red high value area line. When it came to within this upper 20%, we would consider about adding on a short position for this trade, allowing us to capture this movement in the market. And what about down here, where the market broke above? Even if we had chosen to enter, because this was our first box, our second box, and this would be our third box, so we would still be looking for retracement trades, we would have entered when the market came within the top 20% of this box. And even if we had gotten stopped out, our stop level would be so close to this our entry point that this loss would have been kept in check and very minor compared to the possible upside if the market had continued in the short direction. Here we got a short directional Q and we got two possible areas that would be considered as retracement opportunities. The key here is to only take one. Once you've already entered in on a retracement trade, say here, you would not want to add on to the second one. Only enter in on one retracement trade per set of boxes. And as the market went down, here as the market came within the top 20% of this box, even if we entered in on a, another short trade and became stopped out here, the loss in this retracement method is kept to a bare minimum, which allows this method to be profitable. Now, while this is my strategy, you can adjust this to your own personal trading style. This means that you could consider retracement entries only when it comes to within 10% of the bottom or top of a box. Later on in this course, we will be showing you a special strategy for increasing the probability of this type of trade when you notice specific task box formations. Keep in mind, with all of these strategies, we will be going in depth on what stop loss levels you should be considering with every trade. Having an appropriate stop loss just outside of the value area is key with this trade entry strategy. Retracement entries are a great way to enter into trades with minimal amounts of risk. While they may be stopped out since it is so close to the level of support and resistance, they still offer the opportunity to enter in with little risk for a possible large reward. As always, this is Bruce Banks saying, enjoy trading.